this is the making noise podcast so check this out we got um ah oh, for anyone who listens to the podcast you're missing out right now I, i'm sorry i'm sorry but uh we got we got some some really fascinating and exciting uh paintings going on over here this is this is devin's etsy account devin what do what do people have to or should they type in right here uh Osamu Paints. Is that yep, you say that? that's the that's the channel, um, and uh, there's also the hyperlink that you that I sent you that people can access the site through the same one. I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'm doing an extended Black Friday sale until December fourth. Oh, right here, people. Check this out. Thirty percent off everything. Um, I I I was going to. Earlier this year, I think it was, I was going to purchase one of your paintings. And then uh, financial situations hit a standstill, which prevented me, unfortunately, from buying anything. Uh, sooner or later, I will. But, uh, oh, was it because of the quarantine? I can't remember. I think it was around that time. Yeah, it was. But there's, uh, I'm, I'm drawn to this one right now and this one. So, is there any particular one you want me to go to? No, man. There's a, about 40 pieces up there right now. Oh, really? Yeah, you got to keep scrolling. Oh, my God. See, I'm just learning how to use a computer. That makes two of us. <laughs> and there's some. there are also some prints, which are reproductions of other things. And those are much more, re uh, much more reasonable prices. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I don't think these are unreasonable at all, honestly. Uh, I mean, this one right here, eight seventy-five. You know, um, and then that's a print. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yeah. So, for anyone <laughs> listening, to kind of describe this, Devin, do you mind if I try to describe this in some capacity, and then you can give your? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. So, I am by no means a painter or an artist. I am a composer. That's the art that I do is music. Um, but one thing, so with Devin's paintings, what I the way I kind of see it is it's, it's kind of, it's abstract in the sense that there's no specific strict straight lines. I mean, this piece that I have right now actually has some lines in it um, and some circles, but, but uh, the colors in it, there's no hard lines with the colors so much, except actually with this one right here, there's the, <laughs> <laughs> those, those few lines. And then it, it, it's sort of like a lowercase eyes stacked uh, out of sequence in a way. Um, those are, uh, those are people as, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's, just, just, uh, that's as realistic as I get. <laughs> that's there you go. Yeah. So there's, there's this um, like abstraction from what is real um and uh let's see here so yeah he kind of mends these colors together where it's like one general sort of like right here there's a lot of i don't know i guess what would you say like tans and browns going on yep yeah but i wouldn't say it's a solid tan or a solid brown at all and it's very textural too where when you look at it you feel like it looks like you can, if you felt it, if you would feel the contours, like uh, looking at a geographical map where there's mountains and stuff. Um, yeah, so. I often think I often think of these as sort of uh, topographical maps of my brain at that specific moment. There um, you go. So this particular painting is a good example of that. In that, this um, there's the kneeling figure on the bottom left corner, which has. A body sit, uh, kneeling on the floor, meditating um, with a square head. I affectionately refer to that as a blockhead portrait. Mm. Um, and you have on the opposite side is this sort of cascading um, set of shapes that was made with a palette knife, which gives a lot of texture. Um, depending on how much uh, paint I throw on it, I think the highest gesso sculpture I've made on its own or with modeling paste, whatever, was like two or three inches. This one is much more modest at about, I think, a quarter inch off the canvas. But I, and this, like one day, I hope and pray they'll make a paint that could survive uh, 
prolonged like human contact and finger oil that mm. wouldn't discolor it. But I like the idea that these are pieces that would be touched and interacted with. Mm -hmm. the, it, it's it's like, a, yeah, and like I said a moment ago, you can totally see that too, um, which is one of the things that I really like about it. Um, and to kind of reiterate uh, the abstraction of it, because it, when when Devin had mentioned uh, that it's a guy kneeling, so the guy he has, like Devin said, he has a square head, but the head has it's 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 not a face. There's no face. There's like purples and 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 dark colors in there, and then the body kneeling is a orange rectangle, or I'm sorry, a triangle. <laughs> That's okay. I failed high school math too. I don't I don't know squares from geometry, uh, man. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so, triangle has uh, 181 degrees in it, right? I think so. Sometimes. No, it's 180. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> yeah, um, but no, you as you can see, like the terminology I'm using, I'm clearly not versed in uh, painting or art. No, you're good, yeah. man. You're good, man. So, so please humor my, uh, you know, novice, not even novice level, just uh, you know, lay person. Um, but yeah, I love them. I, I I love this. I love this type of art. I mean, um, uh, who was the dude that Feldman was um, pals with? He had a couple. Uh, he was buddies with most. I think Philip Guston might be one of the more obvious ones. There was another one who would do like two colors in <laughs> his paintings. Was it Rauschenberg? Not Rauschenberg. Um, Shit. Uh, God. In that circle. I think in that circle there was Willem de Kooning, Rauschenberg, uh, Philip Gustin. Oh, shit, his name, I'm forgetting his name. He wrote a Rothko, piece. Rothko. Rothko, there it is. <laughs> oh my yeah, god. Mark Rothko. Yeah, th th this is the type of art that I do like. I like art that that has that abstraction, um, and where I look at it, and and it it's not obvious to me what it might be. Yeah. And part well, of with Mark Rothko, there's it's um, I love Rothko because it really invites you into the port into the into the canvas and it asks you to open yourself up to it. Um, mm. I remember having a really emotional experience seeing uh, a bunch of Mark Rothko paintings in the UK, and like I tried. It, I could. I found that I could not actually open myself up entirely to the paintings because it was too scary. Mm. Um, and these, there was, I think there was nine of them, and they're like, I don't know, six feet tall by nine feet wide. They're huge. They're huge. <laughs> and I, I had a moment where I was standing in front of one of them. I just, I like, just started crying. <laughs> oh man, that's that's powerful, dude. There's something. There's something there. That's just. Oh, it was awesome. Oh, I that that's that's such a it's it's unexplainable honestly those sort of experiences you know why it yeah. hits you the way it does in that moment you know um, I remember this one right here I think you didn't you do this one earlier this year or maybe you posted it oh yeah this one in particular um, is interesting so that's um, this is part of a series of pieces that I refer to as uh, relics. Which has a lot of, which has some semi daily objects in it or objects from my own personal life that have sort of reached their end. So, this one on the top, I guess, left hand corner, you have an old watch that broke and was not repair, was not worth repairing. Mm. And I ended up gluing it to this painting. And then on the other side of it, there is a shoe that also reached the end of its life. But there were a couple of major things that happened uh, while wearing those that particular pair of shoes. And I, that watch was mine for many, many years and used it countless interviews and God knows what else. And I wanted to extend their life further, if you will. Mm. And, but also just the general like thoughts on, we as humans tend to, have an affection for old objects, even after a certain point, or collecting things. And this is me pondering those things collectively with everybody else, if you will. Mm. I love that. And man. then there's also a couple of broken clarinet pieces on it, and uh, 
a part of a mask from a little uh, figurine of a samurai and its armor. Mm -hmm. 